What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video I have some pretty exciting stuff for you guys. So I'm going to be going over the cinematography techniques including lighting, lens choice, composition, framing, all those things uh, for the new movie Dune that's coming out in October. So we're going to be talking about the style of this film, how it was shot, and I'm going to be getting into some of the details of how it was lit, and also a lot of the choices that were made for the aesthetic of the film. And I'm also going to be giving you guys some tips on visual effects and how you can recreate some of the visual effects seen in this film. So we're going to be hitting on a lot of different things in today's video uh, but before we get started I just want to say thank you guys for your support at the time of recording this video we've already smashed the 1,000 subscriber goal uh, which is great and I've had a ton of great comments great discussions on the videos and also some great input from you guys and what you guys would like to see next so uh, I had a lot of requests to do a course on filmmaking in Unreal Engine and I've heard you guys so I'm actually in the works on that right now uh, I've already started making some new content for you guys so a full course is coming soon and I'll try to release some videos from the course coming up so if that is interesting to you make sure you subscribe to this video uh, I think Unreal is a really powerful tool and I am really excited to share what I've learned with you guys so without any further introduction let's get into the video all right guys so uh, here we are we got the uh, Dune trailer pulled up I'm just gonna go through this trailer and we're gonna break down some of the lighting and cinematography techniques that they used so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here so we just have these opening shots in the sand. Now, now if we take a look at this shot, we have our sun coming in from this angle. And we it looks like, I mean, if this was shot outdoors, there probably wasn't any fill. Uh, this is really low contrast. It doesn't look like much contrast was added in post. If anything, we have a bounce over here that is just pulling some of that light back onto her face. If this was shot in a studio, which it... It certainly could have been. I know this DP, Greg Fraser, is a big uh, user of virtual production uh, and Unreal Engine. He shot The Mandalorian using uh, virtual production. So uh, this certainly could have been done in a studio. But if not, you know, if, uh, assuming it's outdoors because, you know, generally low budget uh, filmmakers don't have the budget to be in a studio using virtual production for shooting on location. We're going to bounce some light from the sun back onto her face. But, you know, in this case, if you have a camera with enough dynamic range, you might not even need to do that. This looks like just ambient fill on her face. So, very basic here. You can go ahead and move on to the next frame. So, you just see some nice lens flares, some interesting artistic shots here. Okay, now this DP... Uh, Greg Frazier has shot a lot of films and TV shows like this where we have large scale sci-fi um, things, you know, Rogue One, The Mandalorian, and it always has the same look and it uses the same few concepts. And this is one of them. So look what we're doing here. We're filling the air with texture um, with a medium to pick up the light in the scene. So that's going to give us light beams uh, anywhere. There's a hard light source. You see these light beams here. Um, they're shooting in all these directions. This is a hard directional light source, a small directional light source, and that's going to give us a beam. Anytime there's particles or dust or fog in the air, uh, we're going to get those nice light beams. Okay, Fog is a DP's bread and butter uh, many times. It doesn't have to be, but it certainly can enhance uh, the visuals of a scene. Uh, and that's what we're doing here. Not only are we getting the light beams here, but it's also showing us the depth in this scene. Uh, so even even though this shot is from really far away, it's very wide, um, because we have all this dust in the air, it's giving our eyes information on where these uh, objects are located in our scene. So you see um, this object is very far away here, okay? Because it's very faded, it's very, you can tell because of how much dust is in front of it that it's far away. This is in our mid-ground here because it's less faded. You can see it's a little darker, and you can tell by the fact that it's less faded that it's closer to us. And here we have our foreground objects because they're the darkest of all of our objects in this scene. So we have lightest because it's faded far away, second lightest because it's closer, and we have the darkest objects or most contrasty because they're the closest, and here we have our plane of, um, you know, our landscape 
is somewhere in here, okay? It's giving our eye depth information, and as a DP, that's what you want because you're taking a flat 2D image and you're turning it into something that your audience can process as a 3D space. The more depth that you can add to your scene, the better, uh, and the more interesting it's going to be to a viewer. So you're going to see that a lot through this trailer where we're going to be using a lot of different techniques to add depth to these 2D shots. So that is part of what makes a DP a good DP. So we're going to continue... And we can see same thing here. We're adding dust into the into the air. That's creating a lot of depth in our scene, and it's giving us a lot more visual information about where these characters are. This is shot on a long lens. This shot right here. Longer lenses tend to compress the depth of a scene, so that dust is giving us the visual the information about where these people and objects are located within our scene. Okay. So continuing on now. Here we have, and right off the bat, we have another trademark here. So we have the slow push in on a tighter lens on the upper torso of a character. Uh, now, depending on what camera that was used to shoot this, you could be looking at something around a 50 millimeter lens. Uh, seeing as uh, it looks like this was shot on spherical lenses, uh, this trailer kind of seems to go back and forth between spherical and anamorphic, so I don't know why they would do that, but this DP typically shoots on anamorphic lenses. But anyway, uh, we're collapsing the depth a bit in this shot, and the reason that this was the choice could be uh, potentially because it was shot on a virtual set using Unreal Engine like they did on The Mandalorian, or it's just the choice that the DP made for this shot, which, you know, I tend to like this look. Frazier tends to like longer lenses in his work, which I, I'm a fan of, and he also shoots with a very shallow depth the feel generally, which I'm sure his first AC hates, but uh, it, it does turn out some very nice images. You'll see several shots in this trailer have very soft focus, where the subject is slightly out of focus, and it's used very nicely to add a, a dreamlike look and feel, and just add a bit of an artistic look to your shots, but keep in mind that there is a difference between using soft focus as an artistic look and making a mistake on the focus, because you'll see in this film every shot that's intended to be in focus is in sharp focus, so soft focus is something that you want to use artistically and not just leave it in there because you know you didn't have time to get a shot that was in focus now in terms of the lighting in this shot this is going to be a, a thing that we're going to see throughout this trailer we have a very soft overall look it's lit from overhead by a very large source it's probably a 20 by 20 diffusion you know space lights coming through it which is uh, lighting both the set back here and her face, you know, you can see you have uh, slight shadows uh, under her eyes, but very, very soft lighting. And, you know, her, if you look at, at the lighting all over her face, like, it's about the same all over. Um, you don't have much of a contrast ratio here. If you wanted to get this look, if you're shooting outdoors, it's probably just, you know, you want to shoot on an overcast day or when the sun is low so that uh, it's being blocked by, by these rocks. But that's going to give you that nice uh, overhead lighting soft look. What you might do is add a bit of negative fill here on this side of the frame. So just, you know, uh, a 4x4 four four or 4x8 four uh, black um, solid and that's just going to give you know we have a little bit I would say this side of her face is a little bit brighter than this side so uh, if you're looking for that bit of shape you know you just add that 4x4 or 4x8 uh, black solid and that's going to give you a little bit of shape on the face we're also doing something interesting with the color in this shot as you can see um, her eyes here We've really brought out the blue in her eyes to the point that it's in stark contrast with the rest of the scene. This could have been done using contacts or it could have also been done in the grade. It's definitely easier to do with contacts but can easily be amplified in the grade. So, you know, that's another way that we're creating some some contrast in the scene by uh, creating some color contrast between the eyes, her face, and the rocks. And, uh, you know, we have a very brown scene. So this, you know, the black armor here... Uh, grayish black armor is a bit of an accent as well as her blue eyes. I'm going to move on to the next. So again, we have this, you know, fog atmosphere. Um, okay, so right here, we have essentially the same shot. You know, we have this slow push in on a character, and this one is a slightly wider lens. 
Yeah, you can see we get a little bit more depth from this lens. And uh, so in terms of the movement on this shot, um, we have a, you know, a slow push in on the character just below eye level. And this time we're on a bit of a wider lens, maybe a 40 or 32 millimeter. Uh, this was shot on an anamorphic lens, it looks like. So I would say probably a 40 millimeter lens. We're choosing a flattering angle to the face, which is just slightly below the eye line. And we're shooting up a little bit. And we're also off a little bit to one side of the face. So we're shooting from the shadow side. We have, you can see that we have our light coming in here um, on his face. You can see the, the eye light here that's indicating where the light is coming from. And we have a, a soft nose shadow here. It's very soft, so we can see that we have a large lighting source. That's what that means. So um, the larger the light source compared to the talent, the softer it's going to be on their face. The larger the source, the softer the light generally. And you can do that either by increasing the actual size of the source. So you have, you know, you have this size of source. If you want to make it softer, what you can do is diffuse it so you make the source even larger. Or if that's not an option, you move it closer. So in relation to the subject, it's larger. We're shooting from the, sh the shadow side of the face, right? Okay, so this is this is generally pretty much always what you want to do. You want to shoot from the shadow side because that's going to give us the most shape. On the far side of his face is bright and it's slowly transitioning to darkness. That's going to allow us to see the actual shape of his face. We see all, you know, these shapes here. We see this shape. Um, you know, we can see the shape of his mouth and, you know, this stuff on his, on his face, like... If we were shooting from the other side of his face, all of that stuff would simply be the same exposure, so we wouldn't see any shadows, and it wouldn't show any sort of depth on his face or any sort of shape to it. So that's why we always want to shoot from the shadow side if possible, and if it suits your look, unless there's a certain reason that you need to shoot from the other side. To the next shot. Yeah, we can see. What I want to go over is this shot here. We have a fairly heavy dust fog haze in the scene uh, that we're seeing back here it's filling the air it's actually creating this this light beam here and you can see it's giving us this soft glow over the whole background of the image we're lighting with a large soft light from above that's you know filling in everything we probably have space lights shooting through a 20 by 20 um, grid once again and that's giving us this general ambient fill in our scene. You know, we have this more directional light shooting from up here in this area. Okay, and that's giving us a little bit more shape to our scene. So it looks like it's a, a somewhat hard source shooting from up here because you can see we have these highlights. It's not crazy hard. It's probably something like an HMI. But, you know, we have a more directional source that's giving us this shape and also these light rays in our scene. So once again, creating depth with the atmosphere in the scene and bringing out those blue eyes again in this, uh, probably in the grade here, also with contact. So very neutral muted tones in all these images except for the eyes. Okay, so right here, the shot is a little more difficult because it's a wide shot, but the lighting concept is the same. We have a very soft light coming from the far side of the actor, which is also illuminating the set. Um, you can see the light is coming from there. And we have this soft shadow here. This is in shadow as well. Light source is somewhere up in here. And it's probably a, a large soft source once again. So we're getting, you know, that ambient fill in this scene. And you're also getting a little bit of spill on the back wall, which is controlled so that the main focus of the shot is on our character in the bed here. So this spill is pretty, pretty dim, and we're probably just skirting this light off so that it's um, more controlled. So our main source is probably just, you know, sitting up here, and it's giving all of this fill into our scene. It's probably one sources in this scene, so very simple once again. Very naturalistic, and it gives us this very nice soft lighting over our whole scene. Alright, so if you watch this scene... So here we're seeing uh, Frazier's very naturalistic style once again, and another typical technique from him. Uh, we have a large open area lighting this scene with a large soft source, uh, as you can see here. And in the shots of uh, Momoa here, so you can see we have another open door over here. Uh, we have this, obviously, the main source coming from over here, which is this open big area that's giving us this, you know, somewhat soft light on his face. But also in the background, we have this other open door 
which is giving us an accent in the background, which is nice because if this was just dark, it would fall off into darkness. It wouldn't have any sort of detail. Um, but having that door open on, you know, further back in this hangar, we're getting more of that light and it's giving us a nice, uh, a better balance to the frame. So we've also added some haze to add that depth information uh, into the shot. And we have a pretty shallow depth of field. We have some fill on our actors here, probably a light bounced or shot through diffusion. Shooting from the shadow side the whole time, as we can see, uh, we have soft light source on our actors throughout the scene in addition to the main source to bring up the level on their faces so they're more the focal point of the scene. You can get a soft source like this by shooting a light off of a, a bounce board or a white fabric or material like muslin or unbleached muslin, and that's gonna spread the light out and make it softer. So it's gonna make the source of your light larger, which makes it softer. And you can also shoot a light through diffusion to accomplish the same thing, but this typically isn't as soft as uh, bouncing the light. So you can also just use a larger source to start, like an LED panel or a tube light, like a quasar tube or something. And you shoot that through diffusion for additional softness. Uh, that's going to make it uh, very soft. And your other option for the softest lighting possible is a book light where you bounce a light off of a bounce board or fabric and then diffuse the light, which has already been bounced. And this creates an incredibly soft source, but can also be a bit overkill for a scene like this. And it's also a bit harder to control the light and its direction as compared to uh, an LED panel. Because once you bounce light, it kind of spreads out and goes in all directions. And then once you diffuse that light, uh, it spreads it out you know, even more. So any sort of spill you might be getting, you're going to have to flag that off if you want to uh, keep it from spilling onto your, the, you know, the background of your scene. So it can be a little bit harder to control as opposed to an LED panel, which is already a soft source because it's a larger source. Uh, and then shooting that through diffusion or, you know, if you have a soft box for it, that cuts out all the spill and keeps it more directional while also keeping the source soft. So uh, LED panels shot through diffusion can be really nice, especially for lighting faces, because you're not going to get as much spill and it's going to also give you a very nice large soft source. Okay, so moving on to uh, this next shot, uh, nothing much to say here, but this is a big tip that I have for you guys. So notice how the surface here is wet. Uh, this creates an excellent opportunity to create some visual interest in your shot because as you can see, we're picking up these reflections and the highlights from the sky. We're creating a, a very cool reflection and that's just giving us a little more visual interest in our scene. So I don't think anyone's ever complained about having a cool reflection in the shot and adding water to your ground is a great way to do that. So uh, just keep that in mind. Okay, so this is a really cool sequence here. And once again, we have a large side source lighting our scene. This is a technique that we just saw in the previous scene. We have a big window here and we have a hard light coming through the windows uh, down at a harsh angle and that's creating this light pattern on the floor. So that's gonna be our main motivation for lighting this scene. Moving into the close-up, we can see that the uh, the bounce from this light coming in through the windows uh, is coming up and hitting the actor's face. So you can see, you can tell that because the nose shadow is kind of up here, closer to his eye. That means that we're having our source is actually coming up from the floor more so. So we're just using that, the light coming from the window that's ambient and then also the bounce coming off the floor. And that's giving us our main light on our characters. We also have this practical in the back here um, and that's adding a bit of an accent to our shot it's a nice uh, highlight and as with most scenes from this film we're also using a large source once again lighting from the top down in our scene uh, and that's giving us all this ambient fill here uh, it's filling in you know the walls and everything and also you can see this kind of highlight on his head right here that's coming from that top down source and you know if we uh we can see that you know we're we're gener we're lighting this and this is probably skirted off it's probably uh, up here somewhere and it's skirted off to control that spill on the background you know if we come into some of these close up shots here we have this eye shadow and that's coming from this top down light source and then of course we have this highlight on his chin and uh that is coming from this practical in the background. So we're getting, you know, this shape on the edge of his face from the window. We're getting the eye, or, you know, the top of his head and, and all this fill is coming from this top down source. And then we have a little bit of accent backlighting him from this practical. And then if we go to this angle, we can see we just have a light over here that's probably hidden behind this and it's just shooting over uh, into the wall. Uh, and that's just giving us a bit more 
uh, fill and highlight in the back of our scene. There might be something hidden behind this thing here as well, shooting up into the wall. Really just simple filling in our scene. Big thing is we just have one directional light source that's coming into our scene, and then the rest is just kind of filling in uh, with the overhead lighting and accents in the background. Now, let me just point out once again, I'm not exactly sure how this film was shot. So uh, I'm going to tell you how you would light these shots if you're shooting in a studio or if you want to achieve the lighting by using your own lights. Uh, some of these shots were probably done in a studio and some of them may have been done on location. So keep that in mind. Okay, so here we have a really cool shot. We have a very soft source, so a nice large source, and that's placed below our talent and it's shooting up very soft and it's a little bit off to this side. This could be done by bouncing it off of a bounce that's on the floor, or you just use a good size LED panel with some diffusion shooting up at our talent. So in this shot, once again, we have pretty soft top-down lighting, and uh, we can see that because of the shadows on his eyes right here. This is probably a one light setup where we have the soft overhead light and that's about it. And we've also brought out his blue eyes in the color grade again, which is giving us some nice color contrast in our shot. And once again, we're on a longer lens with nice shallow depth of field and the handheld style in this shot gives us that naturalistic feel once again. Nice handheld naturalistic feel. And now let me let me get into some, some discussion on VFX here, okay? So if we take a look at this shot, this is for my, my Unreal Engine people here. So notice how when we shoot things in camera, we want that nice soft lighting on the actor's face. Uh, when we do VFX shots, however, if we wanna get the best look out of our image, direct sunlight is actually often a really good way to go. Uh, direct sunlight does a number of things for you. It brings out the roughness and the detail of your textured objects. So your dirt, your dust, uh, grooves, scratches, grime, you know, these, these nice lines that we see on the buildings here. Um, a nice hard light is going to bring out all of those things, and it's also going to add uh, a lot more uh, roughness and grit, and it also adds a lot more contrast to your shot. So you're getting more shape, which will again add detail and visual interest to your shot, while also allowing you uh, to show depth in your scene. So what we're going for here is recreating reality. And reality is extremely detailed, so the more detail that you can add to your shot, the more your eye is going to believe it. And that's why we often will see harder light sources on CGI objects, if that is an option, or at least more directional light sources on CGI objects. So if we go forward, okay, this is one of my favorite shots in this trailer. This shot has a ton of depth. The lighting is really contrasty. It has great shape, great leading lines, and a lot of texture. Uh, so leading lines are the things in the scene that draw your eye to the focal point of a frame. And uh, if we look here, we have a lot of leading lines. So, you know, we have all these lines here. And uh, those aren't necessarily leading lines, but they create a leading line, which means they're showing the shape of this room, which is essentially leading us up this wall. And that's leading us to the focal point, which, you know, as we can see, the shape of our room kind of converges. Our eye perceives this line, which is on the wall, and it also perceives this line here, which is the floor. And that's all drawing us into our focal point, which is right here. We have the walls and the pillars of this scene drawing our eye down to the gentleman crouching in the main focal point of our scene. And shooting along a wall is a great way to add depth to your scene and draw the viewer's eye to the focal point. Uh, Roger Deakins does this constantly, so you know that's one example of another DP that always does this, but any good DP is going to do this. So just having the lines in your shot is not going to be enough. You have to light them properly so that they are accentuated and come out in your shot. So as you can see here, you know these pillars are all lit in a way that is showing the shape of them and it's leading us uh, down into you know the shape of our of our actor so once again uh, the scene is lit very simply uh, we have an overhead source which is probably in this area here that are shooting down through diffusion and it's placed up high so it's coming down and giving this beautiful shape on our actors here as you can see you know it's giving us this nice highlight on their heads and it's giving us these nice soft shadows, so it's not too hard of a light source, and that's because it's been diffused. And it's also illuminating the fronts of these pillars, and it's slowly falling off into the background of our scene, and that's gonna show us even more depth and even more shape towards the back of the frame. So we have a nice soft source here, but a bit smaller, and placed in the middle ground of our scene, so our foreground is dark uh, here, 
and also our background is dark, the midground is lit well. So, um, you know, we're getting our, our brightest part of our image is in the middle of our scene in the midground. What that's going to do is create contrast in the foreground and the background, and it's going to give us even more shape. So the final touch here is the fog, which is adding even more depth to the shot and just giving a nice visual interest with the wispiness of, of the fog. That single overhead light source is also showing us some really nice texture on this floor here. Once again, we just have a, a soft overhead source that's creating all of this interesting uh, look to our scene. So this is simple, it's a quick setup, and it's also giving us this beautiful image. Okay, so if we take a look at this scene, uh, once again, we have something filling the air. We have the rain in this case, and that's adding depth. And this is probably also, uh, once again, overhead lighting, a bunch of space lights, potentially through diffusion. And then we probably have a line of sky panels up high, up here. And that's going to be adding that directional source on, uh, on our actors here. And it's also filling the air and showing that depth even more. And that's just coming from the far side of the set. Here we just have a smaller source coming from the left side of his face. That's coming in, in here. And you can see that in his uh, eye right here. And then we just have a, another small source and we're shooting that through here. It's probably a more spotted source, so a very, uh, very hard source, small source. And we're cutting that off with anything, flags, blinds, whatever you want to call it. And we're just creating this really thin slit. The key here is that the source has to be as hard as possible so that you get those nice sharp edges that are coming through and, sh and sh giving this, this interesting shape on the eye. This is a very cool shot. And once again, what do we have going on here? We have top-down lighting once again. So we have our, our nice large source here. And it's coming down, it's probably, you know, this is our, our diffusion. And then we have a black skirt coming down on either side and the whole way around um, so that we don't get too much spill on the background. And that's just giving us that nice nice light on, on the top of his head. And you can see it's just giving us a lot more shape. So if we're shooting something straight on and uh, we want to add shape to them, you know, make them look kind of sinister, Lighting from the top down is a great way to do that. It also gives us this beautiful shape on top of everything here. And the fact that it's a large source is also giving us a bit of fill onto everything else. We've also added some haze into the shot, which is giving us a bit of that you know, atmosphere and that kind of glow, which looks really nice. So once again, a very simple setup, and it's gonna give us these really awesome results. So if we just let this play, you know, we can see all of the techniques that we've already talked about here. We have these soft lights, you know, interesting moody lighting. We have a lot of this is lit from the top down. Some of it's just using sunlight, hard sources, um, you know, a lot of interesting shots. But once again, you know, look like look at all these shots. A lot of them have haze. A lot of them have atmosphere. This shot, once again, is entirely lit from the top down. As we go through here, you know, we're seeing a lot of the same techniques being used over and over again, just in interesting ways. Um, I just want to quickly talk about this shot. I love shots like this. So we have some beautiful soft lighting on his face here, which is likely a sky panel that shot through some diffusion, something like that, or a bounced and diffused, you know, book light that's creating our typical Rembrandt lighting with a nice soft nose shadow uh, and the moody lighting on his face so that we're getting really nice soft shadows here. And it's just very, it's very dim. No fill on this one. Uh, it's either he's allowing his face to fall entirely into darkness over here. And the background looks to be lit with these practicals, uh, which are, you know, just these out of focus lights that are giving us some beautiful bokeh. And it's, you know, shot on an anamorphic lens. So it gives us that nice oval bokeh, which is really, really great. They could be candles or small lights of some sort, like you could use string lights or Edison bulbs or something like that. Uh, or some sort of console you would see in a ship or something like that. It could be lanterns, anything like that. But they're creating these nice uh, lighting accents and, and highlights in our background. And that's also just casting these nice uh, this light on the rest of the scene here. 
and uh, it's giving us this overall just kind of fill into our scene, but it's still creating this really nice moody look. So anytime you can create these nice point sources of light in your background, especially if it's going to be out of focus, you want to, you want to do that because it's going to give you some really interesting looking accents to your scene. Obviously, it can also contribute to the overall lighting of the scene, which is nice. There might be a little bit of fill here, but uh, these lights seem to be doing most of the work uh, lighting this scene. Love this shot. If you watch the rest of the trailer, you can see that it's the same techniques as I've shown you uh, and I've mentioned here. We have the overhead lighting, filling the air with particles, shooting from the shadow side. Uh, there, These are all very common lighting techniques that are just applied in the right ways here and with the right lighting ratios. And that's the key is light ratios. So, so really just, just uh, dialing in your look. So that about wraps up the trailer. Uh, I hope you guys learned some interesting techniques, but let's summarize what we've learned today from this video. So the key takeaways and how you can replicate this look. First thing is simple lighting. You have large sources, windows, open doors, outdoor venues, and overcast days. And obviously some of this was shot in studio. So, you know, recreating that overcast look, but simple lighting, you're not really doing anything crazy in terms of lighting here. You're just being smart about it and using your resources to your advantage. Second, we've learned you can't go wrong with top-down lighting uh, that was used quite a bit in this trailer and obviously the film so we've seen that top-down lighting can be a really great stylistic choice and it creates a certain mood in your scene but we've also seen that it can be a great base to build the rest of your lighting on from a scene now uh, the third thing is that we've seen color grading plays a huge role in this process and um, as you can see in a lot of the shots, you know, we're really bringing out the blues in the eyes. There's not really a way to achieve that lighting wise. Uh, obviously, they're probably wearing contacts, but we're really bringing out um, certain colors that we want and we're kind of bringing back certain colors that we don't want so much. A lot of that can be done in the color grade. Obviously, you want to do as much as you can on set and in camera, um, but sometimes we don't have control over the environment and we can have a little bit more control over that in post if we pull it back in the grade. Now the fourth thing is one of the biggest things and that is add atmosphere and particles to your scene if you can. So things like fog, haze, rain, uh, any sort of uh, thing that can go into the atmosphere that's going to create depth in your scene. It adds a lot of visual interest. It's gonna give your eye a lot more to work with in terms of processing it as a 3D image even though it's a flat 2D image. The fifth thing is, you know, using slightly longer lenses. So one of the, this DP's kind of signature shots is that slow push in with a longer lens uh, from just below eye level. That makes for an awesome shot. It's a great hero shot. So, you know, it just experimenting with different focal lengths with different uh, camera moves and camera positions and angles. Using a longer lens can be great. And the sixth thing is, you know, in terms of lighting ratios, we don't have anything too contrasty. And a lot of the blacks in our shots aren't actually dipping fully into black. We have a little bit of fill in most of the shots. And that's just keeping our frame from looking too contrasty and making those blacks not have any information. So it's good to keep that information in the black areas of your image so we're not just crushing them into nothing and that's achieved from using a little bit of fill light and also from not having too high of a contrast ratio between the bright part of your image and the dark part of your image so that's about it for this video uh, i hope this was helpful for you guys and i hope you learned something don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this in the future i have a lot more stuff coming out soon so uh, you'll want to be there for that also, if you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to comment. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thanks for watching and have a good one.